What's up, y'all? Of course, you already know it is Real Talk Wednesday, so it's your girl, April, and I am back feeling so fucking happy, okay? So if you see my recent Instagram post, I really don't do too many Instagram videos, you know what I'm saying, because I just don't have the time, but I was in the car, like, getting down to one of my favorite new songs by Justin Timberlake. And I was just overly happy, like so fucking happy. You ever been so damn happy you just want to share it with the entire world and you just don't know what to do with yourself because you're just so happy? Like there could be so much negative shit going around you that you're so happy you don't even see it. It's like you got this shield like blocking the negativity away from you. So that is how I felt and I love the feeling, yes. Love the feeling. So, in case you're wondering about the hair, I have no wig on today. No wig, uh, no wig, but it ain't all mine. So these are the clippings from Better Length Hair, um, which is in a Chinese-based um, clip-in website. This is the third video that I've done for them. Well, I haven't uploaded this one yet. But they sent me their kinky straight, and they said it's 20 inches. But this bad boy looked like it's like 22. Now, first of all, I did the video with it kinky straight, and then I had to come back on the video. Because it was kinky straight, of course, you see me, I do wear kinky straight wigs. But I have like a teeny bit of leave out, so you would never know that it really didn't blend. But you could tell that like with the ripples in my hair, it was not a hit like it wasn't so noticeable but it was noticeable so I went ahead and flat ironed these babies and they're not silky but I will tell you this they blend so well with my hair right about now so I've had them in for two days I have not removed them because I just don't have the time for all that but my hair is probably looking a little bit tossed right now because I was outside doing a plus size lookbook try on for you girls so, yes, on my balcony, okay, in my bedroom, my balcony, okay, in my, on my balcony. Um, I wanted to go to the park, but it was like, how am I supposed to change my clothes? Where am I supposed to change my clothes at? So, I just did it on my balcony, and it's hell of a hot. And if you see me kind of frowned up in the video, just know it was hella hot. But other than that, yeah, so my hair is looking pretty damn jacked up right about now. I, like, sweat it so bad. Um... I was all glossy and shit, looking all dewy and stuff. But anyway, so yeah, so if you have a real talk issue or uh, need advice, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And as well as that, if you need a wig made by your girl, y'all, you can always visit my website, which is gonewiththewindwigs.webly.com. So I'm going to try to make this one not as long like the hour ones that I've been doing, because 58 seconds do count, 58 minutes do count as an hour, y'all, okay? But I want to try to make it at least 40 minutes, because I did promise my grandson that we would go for some ice cream. Okay, so we have to go for ice cream. And I'm going to wear my pajamas because I did put on my pajamas. And yes, I have on some pajamas today. Well, I just put these suckers on. I'm going to show y'all real quick. So, these are, this is a one-piece jumper, romper. And it is pajamas because I got it from the pajama section in Target. And they are pajamas. But it's so cute, like, for real. And I do have, like, cellulite so excuse that but you know what this is real talk but i love this so i wear this i will wear this outside i mean i'm not going like on a date or nothing with it on or like major shopping but it has buttons right here and it has pockets and it has a drawstring and it has action figures not action figures excuse me superheroes on it's marvel comics and if you guys know i love like t-shirts that have like marvel comics on them and certain shit i love stuff like that so yes this thing is so so comfortable it was 18 bucks i bought it like two weeks ago when that asshole first got arrested you know like the next day i was like on a shopping spree so happy i yes i bought it there so it's two weeks ago two weeks ago today when this video goes up yes he has been gone for two weeks and I am so happy. I have not heard anything from him, had anything from his baby mother or nothing like that. And I'm good. I like, I don't need no bad karma. I got my good karma bracelet on, which brings me nothing but positivity. And that's what I like around me. 
So I have decided, well I ain't decide, but you know what, I love my single life, I love being free and just hanging out with my family. And when Mr. Wright comes along, hopefully I don't scare his ass off, then he will come along. But until then, I'm going to just chill and be easy and just build on making my business more, um, just known, you know what I'm saying? More, Much more known and getting more videos out. So yes, yeah, so let's get into this real talk because I did promise Tinky Man that we would go for ice cream. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have picked three, and hopefully I can get to all three of them because their second one is super long, y'all. Like, oh my god, long. But let's just get to this first one. Um, I have an ex who I broke up with over a year ago. He had been messaging me on Facebook every now and then since the breakup. Well, he got arrested, but the day before he got arrested, he messaged me trying to get back together. His friend messaged me a few days ago to relay a message for me to come see him. Like a dummy, I did. We only dated nine months, but I saw him every day. We were so close. It ended when he got mad and threw a cup of ice at me and yanked me by my hair. That was the first time he acted like that, but I left. So at the visit, he wanted to make plans on being together when he gets out of the county jail. I don't know. But I am currently dealing with someone who's in prison. We'll call him Josh. Josh is so sweet. He has never asked me for anything. Gets me money when I need it. Laugh out loud. Yes, girl. He might be in prison, but Josh makes sure that I have what I need and he has made a living. He makes a living in here. He is very supportive. He talks about getting married when he gets out and building a life together. Opening his own business and leaving the streets alone. Should I tell Josh I went to see my ex when I never visited him because he's in prison eight hours away? And we just going to call this girl Sydney. So first of all, I'm going to just take it, um, first of all, I'm not really with all that jail shit. I'm just not with it, okay? Like someone told me, step outside of your box and, 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 and date other people that have not been part of the jail life scene. Um, sometimes it can be so hard for people, sometimes it cannot. Sometimes people just like them bad boys that got that roughneck vibe, which really, you ain't really a roughneck because you in jail. You ain't really tough. A motherfucker who's tough and rough is one who can hold a job, take care of his family, keep his motherfucking hands to himself, provide, and do what the fuck he's supposed to do and be a man. That's what a roughneck, a tough nigga is. You know what I'm saying? Not that dude who's in jail. To me, I mean, like, really, you first of all, you should have never went to see the ex-boyfriend in jail, at the county jail. And so what? You went on a visit. He said that he want to get back together. He want to get married and all of this shit. That's what they all fucking say. I have heard that enough times. That's what they all said. Not from my own prior relationship, but I've heard that then too. But I have heard it from so many people that I know, so many Real Talk episodes, just life in general. Like, that's what they all say. When I get out, I'm going to do right by you. And we're going to get married. And I'm going to leave these streets alone. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to stop drinking. And I'm never going to put my hands on you again. Yeah. First of all, they tell you what they think you want to fucking hear. No, nigga, tell me what the fuck um, you really mean, okay? Don't fucking feed me no fucking bowl of oatmeal that's been sitting there for three days, okay? And the milk is sogged up because I ain't trying to hear that shit, for real. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. First of all, you got a boyfriend who's in jail. He's eight hours away. You ain't never even went to see him. And on top of that, he makes sure that you have stuff. But he in jail. He's a nice guy. He gonna get out of the jail and he gonna marry you too, he said. He gonna start his own business. I've heard that too. I'm gonna start my own business when I get out of jail. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be a Christian. I'm gonna run a marathon. I'm gonna fly up to heaven. And I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. If they could tell you, they would put you in heaven and make sure that you get to heaven when you die and you would believe it. They'll tell you that shit, too. I don't believe no motherfucker who is in jail, okay? None of them. They could be telling you the truth, and to me, it's all lies. You need to show and prove. Now, as for that loser that you was with, 
that you went to visit that threw the cup of ice at you and yanked you by your hair? Bitch, why'd you even go fucking visit him? Okay? For real, though? My allergies are killing me. Why would you even go visit him? Like, y'all broke up. Y'all, you left him alone because he threw a cup of ice at you and pulled you and yanked you by your hair. You broke up with him. I wouldn't give a fuck if he sent me a message on Facebook with a lottery ticket that said you won. Nigga, fuck you on some real shit. But you went to see him. So now you are just opening up the doors to vulnerability and stupidity, okay? Never believe no my, nobody who's been sitting in jail. Some of them may have really good intentions and really good reasons of why they asses are sitting behind fucking bars, locked the fuck up for 24 hours a day but here's the thing if you left a man because he put his hands on you what fucking makes you think that he ain't gonna fucking put his hands around your throat this time instead of yanking you by your goddamn hair have we not just went through this last week when I had to tell you my situation and how I had to put the nigga in jail because he thought he was going to put hands on me? You're not about to do that up in April's surrounding. This is April's world. This motherfucking house that I live in right here is April's motherfucking world, okay? And outside of the door, it's, it's still my fucking world. But you know what I'm saying. You get the point. You know what I'm saying? You're not about to disrespect me. So his ass is in jail. And I'm pretty sure he liking it where he at. And I'm pretty sure your ex-boyfriend is liking it where he at too. There's a reason why he was there. There's a reason why they all there, honey. Honey boo boo child. There's a reason why they're all there. Now you want to know, should you tell Josh that you went to see some fucking loser that put his hands on you. Instead of, and you never went to see Josh. Now, I would say I had a drink, but I already had a drink today. So, I really didn't want to be too drunk. I'm not even toasted. I'm not even nice. That was like hours and hours ago. But, like I said, I'm going to get ice cream. So, but I'm going to just pretend like there's something real strong. And I'm going to let you answer that question. Should you fucking tell Josh that you went to see some other nigga in the county jail that you used to fuck with who beat you the up, or rather... I don't know if that's what you want to call it, but whatever. It is what it is. Instead of coming to visit him, who sends you money. I'm going to let you figure that out, Sydney, because to me, that's the dumbest question ever. No, you should not tell Josh that. You should have even went. You just said it yourself like a dummy. I went to visit him. I hope that was your first and only visit, okay, on some real shit. Now, it's nice that Josh sends you money and he got a living. He, he make a living in jail. What is his living? He's already in jail. They don't got fucking payroll in there. There ain't no jobs where you clocking in. They get like, what, 25 cents, 50 cents a day? It's like one of those commercials where you feed the children in foreign countries. 50 cents a day will feed them. That's how much they fucking get paid in jail for whatever they do. 50 cents a day. So I'm pretty sure he's not sending you that money. So whatever he's doing in jail, it's illegal. So he's in jail for some bullshit and he's still doing some bullshit. So that right there make you think, and you talking about laugh out loud, girl. Yes, he got he making a living. Laugh out loud, girl. You're a jackass, okay? Or some real shit. Oh, I'm, I'm just like, that's nice. He sends you money. I mean, great. But do you really think that he would really appreciate you going to visit some next nigga when you ain't never even went to see him, which is eight hours away? Yes, eight hours is a far drive. It is. It totally is. I get it. But... Some things are better left unsaid, left the fuck alone. Who's to say you tell Josh that shit and then he come and get out on some real crazy bullshit? However, if he find out about it, he might be on some real crazy bullshit. Because he is sending you money and doing things for you from inside. And men that are like this, that are in jail, they do something for you. Some of them, they like to hold that over your head, dangling like... I got you this, or I did this, and I did this for you. What you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Or they just like to hold that over your head, that petty shit. Like my daughter says, all right, petty LaBelle. And it's petty. I mean, I just went through the same shit. You bought me a fucking iMac desktop. Okay, $1,800 computer. And you bought me a new camera for $950 with some lenses. Big motherfucking deal because I had a camera and I had a laptop. And I'm telling you what, it might not have been the best quality like this, but April could have got her own shit. But I don't need nobody to keep bringing that shit up in my face. Just like what I'm trying to tell you is, Sydney, is 
Josh may be that type that brings that shit up over your face. You think that he's going to get out of jail and he's going to start his own business and he's going to marry you, marry you, and he is going to leave the streets alone. The nigga is playing with fire in jail by making a living. I don't know what he does. Um, I don't want to know what he does because I ain't about that life. And the way my bank account is set up, um... I don't want to get bailed out because I don't want to spend my money. So, yeah. No, thank you. Don't need to know that. But, if, uh, yeah, your question is no. Hell fucking no. You don't need to tell Josh, okay? I'm up for being honest, but some things are just better left unsaid. So, especially dumbass shit like that. Like, stop communicating with old boy that pulled you by your hair because the next thing he could do is be pulling your ass back down by, down the steps, down the flight of steps, okay? Fucking your ass up. Why would you want to be dealing with somebody like that? Why would you even go visit him? That's on you. But me personally, I wouldn't even bother with no low life like that. I've had my share of dumb ass motherfuckers. And I vowed two weeks ago, well before two weeks ago, but he just wouldn't fucking leave. You know what I'm saying? He just wouldn't fucking leave. But I just vowed to leave all dumb ass motherfuckers alone. So I might have to leave a whole lot of people the fuck alone. Not dumbass females, because I could deal with them to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? But men just don't want to get involved with no dumbass fucking Negroes or Caucasians or Asians or whatever. And you know what's funny? Someone said in my last video, I should just step outside the box. And maybe I should date somebody that's Asian or white. What the fuck make you think that an Asian or a white motherfucker ain't gonna fucking act stupid and do dumb shit and be petty just like a black man? Just because their color and their race is totally different don't mean that they ain't gonna, they ain't capable of doing dumb shit. Like, we got Asians and white men and Mexicans and all type of motherfucking um, race ethnicities in jail because they're doing some dumb shit, okay? So, it don't have nothing to do with the race, even though I have never dated outside of my race before. And it's not that I choose to, I mean, that's just what always I was attracted to, and that's what they were attracted to. So, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, I'm only going to date black men, but it was because it's not like that. I just, you know, just where your surroundings are at, where you grow up, where you live at. But, yeah. I step outside the box that race don't have nothing to do with it. But don't think because they're a different race that, oh, they're going to be a different type of person. Let me tell you something. I'll go date an old fucking old ass man that's about to die. All right? He could still be a jackass. Anyway, uh, Sydney, think about what I said because, yeah, just think about it. This is the one that I said was super long. Like, OMG. Can you guys see this? Like... Do you guys see how long this is? Like, I'm still scrolling. Like, oh my god. I can't believe she freaking typed so long. And she's absolutely gorgeous. Like, oh. She's absolutely gorgeous. She sent me a picture of herself. She's fucking beautiful. So I'm going to read this one. It's Real Talk. Please help ASAP. So this is a long one. And this might just take up the whole 45 minutes. But we're going to do this. Please help me as soon as you can. This is breaking me down inside. This is going to be a long one. You might need a drink or two to get you through it. I have been unable to speak about this to anybody, so sharing this is really hard. Please help me. I don't know if it's best to put it out to the world or not. If you think some details are too revealing, be please take them out. But I really need your help. If you think this is a lot to read on the channel, please reply to me in an email. If not, it's okay. I changed my name to Kayla. Please don't tell me how stupid I am. Okay. I'm living in hell every day and I have no way out. I have no one to talk to and I hate myself and beat myself up constantly about this. I live every day with no light at the end of the tunnel to give you a bit of a backstory. I'm 26 years old and I live in the UK. I have dealt with a lot so far and I thought I was able to deal with my past. My father was abusive and left my mother in a horrible way. My mother was never really there for me, even with all my efforts. So I have mostly been alone, being my own person to look up to with the lack of male and female figures in my life. It's sad to say, but love is a motivating factor for me in life. I yearn nothing more than to love and be loved and one day to have children. I work hard and all I do is literally work and come home. I have never had what someone could consider a normal relationship. 
I've always been treated badly and I have allowed people to do that to me. My first long-term relationship was with a man who constantly lied and cheated on me for nine months. We were together for six for years. My second relationship was also long-term, six years. I am not an ugly person by any standard and now and no I don't need to be told I'm beautiful by a man, but he never complimented me, made me feel special, called me beautiful, told me he loved me. He never did any of that in six years. Safe to say a lot of his mistakes made me sad that at 26 I've never had one healthy relationship and has made me very real low, have very, very low, very real, very really low confidence. Now to the real talk. This is so hard for me to talk about. I'm crying as I write this, as I've been able to as I've been able to talk to anybody about it, and I look to you for your advice, and I really respect you. Last summer, I went to New York with my friend. Long story short, on the day I was due to leave, I met a guy. When he approached me, he was very respectable and kind. He gave me his card, and we exchanged numbers. Let's call him John. After the bar, we went to Hookah Lounge to sit and talk. John was 35 at the time, and I was 25. He left as he had work the next day, and we continued to talk over the WhatsApp. When I first met him, I should have read the signs. He was too forward and too loving. Was he sincere or was it a game? He had a nice kiss. We had a nice kiss that day, and that's as far as it went. The next day, I left back for the UK. We had been speaking prior to my flight. He sent me a dick pic randomly. Seriously, why do guys do that? I was kind of turned off and took it as a red flag, like, what the fuck, shaking my head. When I had landed back in the UK, I messaged him and we were talking more. Second red flag, I don't know why, and I knew it was a game, but I don't know why I went along with it. He told me he could see us having a future, moving with him, living with him, having kids with him, all of this. When I look back, now I am shocked that I even went along with it. Not that I believed him, but that I entertained it. I must be in a really bad place. We Skyped and he told me that he loved me, third red flag. It was days after meeting me that you loved me. I didn't reply and kind of just reply, aw, I don't know what to make of all this. I was skeptical. <clears throat> Fast forward a month and everything was going good. He showed me love on my Instagram and would tell me baby, would call me baby and tell me I love you. Things that all women should hear, I have never heard before. I was really happy, truly I was so happy. I have never been so happy in the years of my previous relationships. And this, is, and this was the happiest I have ever felt and it was a long distance relationship. So we didn't get to see each other much. We had arranged for me to meet him back in New York three months later. He said he would come to the, <clears throat> he said he would come to the UK but he didn't have a passport. So, would, so, I would, so he would apply for one. So I paid for a ticket and he told me I would be staying with him. So I didn't book a hotel. Stupidly, I had started to fall deep in for this guy. He was telling me things I had never heard before and literally, th literally things I prayed someone to say to me. About two months in, things started to go rocky on his side. He would communicate less and less and pay a lot less attention to me, always ignoring me and making me feel like crap. Even on social media, he would like other women's pics but completely ignore me. Seriously? I'm traveling halfway around the world to see you out of love and you do this? Okay. Flash forward. About three weeks before I came, he told me he had a stroke. That's why he wasn't communicating. I was shocked and sad because who lies about a stroke? Flash forward about two weeks before I, um, before I come. He said he had been having trouble with his landlord and he was going to court, so he left his apartment and went to his mom's. I understandably was really freaked out as I had a flight booked and no hotel. So I booked a hotel for us and sent them an email to ask for an upgrade as I wanted to be special, as I wanted it to be special. A week before I was due to fly over, he implied that he needed money to help him with his situation. I can't believe I'd done it. I, I didn't think at the time he would be lying. I can lie to you about how much money I spent, but in this real talk, I'm being 100% honest. I converted $2,000 so I could help him. I have to say, at this time, I was really unwell. I had previously had tonsillitis, and the doctor gave me penicillin, for which I didn't know at the time I was having an allergic reaction to. My whole mouth was swollen, bleeding, full of ulcers, and I could barely eat. 
I also had flu-like symptoms. I was really unwell, but I had everything booked, so forced myself to go. So I flew there, and the hotel was beautiful. It was a top floor room on one of the highest floors and overlooked the city. When he came, we talked and chilled. He wanted to get something to eat, but with my mouth, I couldn't eat, so I said I would go with him. Before we left, he asked if I could give him the money so he could put it in the bank. It was about 7 p.m. at this point, and I said, don't worry, I'll give it, but isn't that a lot and the bank is shut? He said, no, it's okay, I can put it through the ATM. I don't know why, but I stupidly gave him the money. After all, where is he going to go? This was a Friday, and I'm here till Monday, so he's going to be here with me. After we came back from eating, we were chilling and had a little bit of Hennessy. I went to take a shower as I had been flying all day and wanted to freshen up, so I came out in lingerie and we proceeded to. It wasn't what I expected. He used to put pics on his he used to put pics on his IG, those kind of ones. I eat pussy, blah blah. No, he didn't. He could barely keep it up. And it wasn't what I expected. He just kept going soft. But when you love someone, you kind of just ignore it. After this, he said he wasn't feeling too good and went to the bathroom. He was in there for a good 20 minutes or more, I guess. And between this time, I must have put my head down to rest, but for a nap. Because I was tired from flying, and I didn't know how long he was going to be. Now my life turns. I'm crying harder as I type this, as this was truly traumatic. Truly, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I'm going to be honest about all details here. I have to be. I woke up and he was gone. A person's worst nightmare. He was gone. After trying to understand what had just happened, I looked at my phone and got a WhatsApp app message along the lines of, you never know until you're with someone if you have a connection. I'm sorry, I just didn't feel it. Thank you for the money. You are a good woman and I will pay you back. I don't think you know, you understand how I felt in this moment. I was in New York City alone and ill and robbed of $2,000. I went to the shower to cry as I felt so dirty about what happened. I cried and cried and cried and called him and I said I was going to the police. We argued and he said it was a gift. It was about 12 a.m. at this point and I left the room crying, just walking around keeping to myself and crying. I walked to two officers and they, they said it was a gift. I'm sorry. I stayed out until 4 a.m. walking around just in shock at what was happening to me. I called 911 and they sent officers to my room. They were more understanding but said the same. I'm sorry this happened to you, but it was a gift. There's nothing we could do. I tried to sleep and woke up at 9 a.m. I got ready and thought, I can't let this happen to me. I'm going to see him and, sh and shout or I don't know what. So I got the train at about 12 p.m. and went to the South Bronx. I had got lost, so I walked for 30 minutes to find the projects he was living in. I never thought about my safety. London girl walking around the Bronx looking all angry. I went in there, went and knocked and knocked and stood there for 20 minutes, and he wasn't there. I went back to my room. I must say, I had completely lost all appetite, and because I wasn't feeling well, I couldn't eat. I didn't have energy. When back in the room, I noticed he had left his watch and headphones. I could have been a bitch and threw them away or selling them, but I knew this was leverage to see him and to get even. I texted him and told him I had them. He said to keep them, but I said I would give it back. The next day came and I met him outside my hotel. We sat down and he began to tell me how he was sorry, but, he, but that he need, needed to fix himself. The horrible things he was saying was meant to push me away and that he didn't mean it. He wanted to work on himself, and he said that he wouldn't leave me here alone again. He was on the way to seeing his kids and said he would come after. I went back to the hotel and waited till 6, was when he said he would come contact me and meet me. So I waited, and he said he would call me. He still was with his kids. I waited and waited and waited, pacing the room literally up and down. I called him so many times, WhatsApp him, and he never answered. I had to leave for my flight at 9 a.m. the next day, so I went to sleep. I woke up at 4 and was just crying. I couldn't wait to leave, but I was so traumatized by what had happened. I was upset, hurt, and truly heartbroken. 
on the plane back, I had made the decision to go to the ER when I landed because I hadn't eaten since Friday and it was now Monday and I was in a lot of pain. After coming out of the ER with medicine, I had texted him to say that I was sorry for texting so much and hoped he was okay. He told me his grandmother died. Red flag. A week had passed it. A week had passed at this point with very sporadic contact with him. I was still barely eating. As, as although feeling better, I was slowly falling into real depression. I never slept or ate much, drank, just drank a lot of water. I'm going to skip a lot now and say that I was genuinely stupid. I meant it from my heart to help him because I loved him, but he said he needed money to bury his grandmother. I must say I work a good job, and he does too. He works in the middle of New York City as a manager for a company. So I know he has money, but I was not thinking straight. So I gave him one thousand dollars to help bury his grandmother, or she would, or she would be sent to Potter's Field. More weeks passed, and conversations were still sporadic. I couldn't talk to any of my friends. I barely ate and was crying every day. During this time, he would block, unblock, and ignore me from everything, but assure me that he loved me. Weeks passed, and he said he was on the streets because of drinking or some bullshit. He said he had no money. He said he was with his kids. He said it was his kid's birthday and he would rather die than disappoint them. I said they are your kids. They will understand. I'll buy them and send them, but no, he wanted the money. He said he had to get somehow. He had to get it somehow and he and it was only me or his ex he knew would give it to him. He said his ex would ask him to stay, sleep with him only for it. And so pockets less $400. I gave it to him. He continued the ignoring charade while I was slowly becoming more and more depressed. I had become skinnier intentionally due to starving <clears throat> myself through not eating. I couldn't talk to anyone. I was just so traumatized about my whole life up to this point. It had been about three weeks over Christmas. I haven't heard from him. On New Year's Day, I did. On New Year's Day, he told me I had a heart attack. It was bad, but I'm okay. My mother been being of age and unwell herself couldn't pick him up and the only person that could was his ex so he had been staying with her and said he had slept with her no more than one occasion so what was the point in contacting me since he knew it ruined us at this point I have fully broken up with him as I told him if you cheat on me I will leave you straight a part of me thinks that what he said was a true a part of me thought it was just a way for him to get away from me it was here he was on my whatsapp still but I didn't contact him. I was upset and, my, and in my feelings. I began to smoke cigarettes more and would get home from work and drink, something I have never done at home by myself. I was spiraling. After helping you so much, you did this to me? This was really a low point in my life. I became very sheltered and hated everything about himself. I was with my friend one day after trying to feel better, and we decided to go to New York City. I must say that I had stupidly booked another flight another ticket to see him but he went on his ignoring um, charades and the airline was understanding and let me rebook for another time so I thought I used to love the city and he made me hate it so why not go we had no contact to this point and a couple weeks before going I wanted to shit on him like yeah I'm coming back bitch so I changed my whatsapp message to something about me and my girl tearing it up and living it up and my display picture to the dollars we just converted all to piss him off, and it worked. He messaged me, though, saying my status was hoish and my picture ratchet. I didn't really care. I was just glad it got to him. When I called him out for calling me out and calling me those things, even though he knew I wasn't, he said, I know you're not. I just don't want other people to look at you like that. You are none of those things. This convo proceeded to go on and on, and he told me that he loved me and that he was sorry for what he has been putting me through. I told him I loved him as I did. It was February and he didn't and he hadn't really contacted me a while while I was there. But I was having fun. I didn't care. On the day before I was due to fly back, he messaged me and asked me where I was staying. I had got so excited but I knew I couldn't rely on him. He said he would come at eight PM. He never did. Surprise, surprise. I thought fuck this and went out with my friend and one thing led to another and I had my first one night stand. I'm not proud of it as I've only slept with guys I've been in relationships with. But I thought screw it. I don't even care anymore. He had blocked me and deleted me and deleted WhatsApp. So I thought this was the last time I was going to hear from him. When I came back, I transformed myself. I worked really hard on making myself better, getting my hair did, new clothes, posting pics, and just life and just living life. I went on a crazy moment 
I went on a crazy amount of dates and had learned through this experience how not to get attached. So now I don't get attached to anyone, which is good. I was working hard to become a better and better person. I missed him a lot still, but I had no option but to just forget about it. Me and my friend have booked to come back again for this May. I hadn't expected to hear from him again, and at the end of March, he unblocked me and messaged me on, on Facebook and Instagram. I had ignored it for a few days until I thought about him and accepted. The conversation for about a week was normal. Hi, how are you? He had seen the new pictures I had been posting and probably felt a type of way. He had messaged me a week later telling me that he did love me and wanted to take it slow. That I that I was beautiful, that I was beautiful, and that he just wanted us to do everything. He said he would eventually, ma um, eventually marriage kids. I stupidly fell into the trap again. Two weeks before I was due to fly back, he told me he was in a situation with a loan shark, and that he didn't want to ask me because of our past, but he was stressed out about it. Our conversation became more about this, but I told him I would never help him again until I saw him, and then I would think about it. I flew over, and the second day after I arrived, he was due to see me. I have developed bad anxiety as to him being so unreliable. I get scared that I get all dressed up, and he just doesn't come again. The time came, and he did show up. We had talked for hours, and I told him about how he made me feel and how he did me wrong. He held me like I had never been held and assured me he loved me and that we were together again. We had sex again and he again didn't go down on me and again the first and second time he kept going limp. It made me feel really unattractive like he didn't want to sleep with me. I told him I wanted to see him again and we met up a few days later. He said he had a really bad headache and worked the, day, the next day so he couldn't stay too late. I was happy he was just there. We had a really good time talking and joking, no sex, as he said his head hurt, but I gave him oral. I said I wanted to see him again before I left, so we met up the next day. He said he was really feeling ill, but he wanted to prove to me this time was different, and he showed up. He stayed for about two hours and left. He didn't hold me, he didn't touch me, and only talked about his health and his situation with the loan shark. I didn't know what to think and kind of just left it there. The day I was due to fly, he said he had been taken into the hospital because he fainted and his mother took him there. I really loved this man. I was close to extending my ticket to stay, but had worked in a few days and couldn't miss it. He kept talking about his health and his loan shark, and if he doesn't get the money by the 30th of May. I came off of my flight, and no, this is the stupid, but I gave him the money. $4,000. <laughs> I had went to the bank to take out a loan to help him with this. Before I sent it to him, I said, I want to make sure you're telling me the truth. I want a picture of your passport since he said he was going to come here in July for me to spend time with me. But said he was in the hospital and he couldn't. I asked him to put my picture up as he was always like, as, as he was always liking other women's pictures. And I caught him a few weeks ago on some chick's picture, my baby and write in heart, eyes, etc. all over her picture. It crushed me inside and I wanted her and all the other bitches to see me. So he did put it up and kept it up and then I sent the money. A few days later had passed and he said he got test results back and he had a tumor in his lungs. I, did, I didn't believe it but went along with it. He said it was a lot to handle and didn't want to talk to anybody. Right, right. A day after this, he sent me a message along the lines of, I've had a problem with my heart as a child. I don't want treatment. I want to go out on my own terms. I can't afford treatment. This is my goodbye. I love you and appreciate how good you are to me. What? I messaged him saying not to block me and we could get through this. But the next thing I knew, he deleted my pic and he blocked me. I had no emotion this day and could, couldn't even cry. I was just shocked. I went home and found that he hadn't blocked me on Facebook. So I sent him a long message of how he was a special kind of evil. If you were really going through this, why would you block me out of your life? The person who has been by your side through it all, a long message about the next dog he meets will be karma for how he treated me. He sent me one saying hours later, you still don't get it. Always got to be about you. As I told him, I didn't believe him, and he blocked me. Right? Is that what you're yeah. 
As I told him, I didn't believe him, and he blocked me from Facebook. I made a profile with the same name and just nothing on it, just to message him again. I told him I would delete the profile after he just apologized and wished him, and wished him well. I hope we meet again. He hasn't accepted the Facebook message, but I hope he reads it. During this time, I will say that I stalk his social media like the girl, girls he always likes their photos and always sees him liking stuff. Like even now, he told me he wants to take his life. I made a fake social profile, I know, I know, to keep tabs on him. And he's still liking pics and the one chick I confronted him about still leaving her eyes on her pics. If you were dying, would you do that? No, even to the fake profile I made, he was leaving. Wow, comments on the pics. I don't know why I made this profile, as it hurts me to even look. I look and I hurt myself and beat myself up more about it. I am 26 years old. I am not an ugly person inside or out. He is 36, but wants the most STD looking loads. Ooh, he wants the most STD looking chicks with loads of kids who are in their 40s, but looks like they're pushing in their late 50s. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself to stalk him and keep hurting myself. He was once so loving to me and stopped all of that making me feel like the most ugliest person alive. Telling others they're beautiful but ignoring me. Talking big game about he eats pussy and he got a big dick but can't do that or perform on me or even touch me. He, he, he could call other women beautiful and not see me and all of the things I've done for him. I've done more for him than most wives would push the limits for. He's moving on and these women don't know the evil he is or what he puts me through. And I am home spying on him, killing myself more. I'm writing to you because I really need your help. I had never experienced love like he gave me and nobody talked or made me feel as loved as him. When he was good, he made me feel so special, which I have never felt. He would write me poems, tell me things I've never heard. I really loved this man. When he did use to hold me, I used to love being his arms. When he was good, he was everything. I was looking for and flaws and all, I looked past it all. I love this man truly and deeply, and I cry because I will never see him again. He's not the best looking man, but to me, he was the most handsome. I really love him. I cry myself every night to sleep since then. I cry at the drop of a dime. I started to smoke more again. I can barely eat, and I'm drinking again. I feel like I'm slowly killing myself. This was really paid. This has really paid a toll on my health. Please don't tell me how stupid I am for I already know. I did it out of love and being kind in my heart, but it has hurt me and I'm lost in money and in my heart. I don't know what to do. I want him to contact me again. I don't know if he ever will. I feel like I would do better if he knew he could see my pics again and see me doing good. But if I'm blocked on everything, what's the point, even trying? I haven't spoken to my friends, and I just go to work and come home. I cannot face people right now, and I'm so embarrassed but distraught at the story that I don't know what to do. I wouldn't wish any of this heartbreak on anybody. My life has pretty much been a waste with how I have allowed people to treat me. One after the other, I get hurt. I feel like I'm no way near any position to even consider dating again, as it would not be fair for the future guy. Because, to be honest, I have no trust, and I have a lot of issues to deal with. The thing I want more in my life than anything is love. April, I don't know what to do. I feel like I have no closure, and being that it's a long distance, I will never see his face again. I told him a lie that I might be moving there for work in the future. I'm lost right now, and I can't see light at the end of the tunnel. I want to go there in July or August. The only place I know where to find him is at his work, and I want to wait outside when he finishes and either make peace or show him revenge. I had the means to book the flights, but I want him to see that he had really down ass. He had a really down ass woman with me. I was loyal and did everything for him, and he shitted on me. A part of closure that would help me. Help my soul is if I was, if I were, what? Oh, a part of closure that would help my soul is if I went there and I saw him and he sees what he lost. If I worked out, got the best clothes, and looked as bomb as I know I can and shit on him. Stand in his face, look him in his eyes. He probably thought he would never see me again, but stand there and make him see what he's lost. April, this is the only way I know I can heal from this situation. I am well and truly broken and have no heart left. I never believed this I never believed his lies, but did it but did it to help him anyway. Do you think I should go? 
being here at home is not helping me at all. Before I go get over, before I could get over it, but it's so much more worse, and my life is in pieces. I can't focus on anything else, and I feel like I cannot move on without st staring him in his eyes and telling him what he did to me. All my heart, energy, time, and embarrassment. It can't all be for nothing. I can't let him have the last laugh. Please, please, please help me. What should I do? I am crying as I write this. I am truly traumatized. I have attached my picture as his and his. Oh, and the type of bitches he likes. I did this because I'm grateful for you reading such a long story and being able to put faces to the pictures. Please don't publish or show the photos. Okay, so... That was a long story. And, woo! I think that was like my whole real talk. And I can't even remember what she wants me to call her because that was like 30 minutes ago. Okay? So, uh, Kayla. She said to call Kayla. So, Kayla. So, first of all, I had to take a swig of water because I was dying of dehydration there. Okay, so first of all, Kayla lives in the UK. She is absolutely gorgeous, okay? Um, I can't show you her pictures, but she's gorgeous. And he's not the cutest thing, and he ain't the ugliest thing, but he's not something dateable. I like, I'm, she's too pretty for him. I, and the bitches that he's liking the pictures on look like um, troll monsters. Like, really? Oh, But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Unfortunately... Kayla, you are so hurt and distraught, and of course, yeah, you're going to tell me not to call you stupid, so I'm going to say you were very naive by sending this man money all those times, and you know what, though, I, and, and I'm not going to bash you, because just by reading your email, you can tell by just reading her email that she is really lost, and is hurt, and is confused, because if you have been in past relationships that have dogged you out and have never told you you're beautiful and she's fucking beautiful and have just treated you like shit and then you meet someone on a visit to the United States to New York and then you get to know this person but you really don't get to know this person because you're basically chatting with him through social media and I'm not really sure if you were talking to him verbally but you're talking to him through social media and a lot of times what it is is more or less you're getting catfished. You're kind of getting catfished. He's coming to you with all of these fucking elaborate crazy stories about he had a stroke. He needs a kidney transplant. He, his, mom, his grandmother needs to be buried. His dog got hit by a jet plane. Like all kinds of crazy shit. Lone shark and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And... He's thriving and he's feeding off of your sympathy for him. And that's unfortunate because, unfortunately, he has found the right one to feed off of and to freaking manipulate and use. You know what I'm saying? And catfish. This man does not love you, Kayla. And, unfortunately, I don't want to be the one to say this to you, but you were used. You have been used. And this is just his swindle. You may not be the only woman that he is swindling like this. Nine times out of ten, if he's gotten this amount of money from you, there are some other bras that he has done the same exact thing to. And how are you really positive and sure that he actually does have a job? If he has a job, this nigga don't need to be eating off of you like this. Like... It's unfortunate that women get taken or people get taken like this all the time from people on social media. That's why I don't do that social media dating shit and all of this because I don't trust nobody. And you can tell me anything but behind a computer screen or behind a phone. You can tell me just about anything. You know what I'm saying? It's And if you knew that these stories that he was telling you were all a bunch of phony baloney and shit like that, but you were just going along with it, why give him the money? Because you want to be loved and because he was telling you these things. So this is her problem. She has never been told these things by a man. And so the first one that tells her this, she's falling all in for him. And she's like, OMG, this is the nigga right here. I'm feeling him. I like his style. But in reality, he's a fucking dog. He is a sheep in wolf's clothing, okay? No good for you. No good for you. And now you're to the point where you're getting you're taking out loans for him. 
He is a loser, a straight up loser. Why worry yourself, Kayla, about getting back with him? Meaning revenge and karma and letting him see what he's missing out on. It doesn't matter. No matter if you're standing right there in front of his so-called job with the baddest outfit or like if you were Beyonce or some shit. It won't matter to him because he never was in this for a relationship with you. No matter how beautiful you are, how pretty you are, he was not in it for that, okay? For all we know, he could be gay. Maybe that's why his dick didn't stay hard. And maybe that's why the nigga don't eat pussy. Because he could be gay and just be telling you all of this shit because he wants what's in your bank account. Now, it's one thing to be loved and you want someone to love you. And yeah, I get it. Everybody wants to be loved. Who doesn't? Who freaking doesn't? But the first thing you got to start with is right here. You got to learn to love yourself first before you can allow anybody else to love you. Because if you don't love you, then... You gonna meet just any Tom, Dick, and Harry, and he can tell you you are the beautifulest thing in this world. And what you gonna do? You gonna fall for it, and then he gonna be the piece of shit, and you gonna keep running back to him and keep running back to him because you feel like he really loves you because he said he loves you because you don't love yourself. Everybody has been through some shit in their life with their parents. Maybe not be everybody, but enough of us have. You know what I'm saying? And we have to stop letting those excuses. Or stop using those as excuses for our lives right right about now in the real world. Like, stop using, oh, my parents were crackheads. Oh, my parents, they didn't get along. Oh, my parents, they divorced each other when I was a kid. We have to stop, and that's why I am the way I am. We have to stop using those as excuses for the reason of why we are the way we are today. Because that's not an excuse. That's not a good enough reason. We all go through some shit. Then if that's the case, my kids would say, well... I'm bad and I act up because my mom, meaning me, when, when she was 20, she had food stamps, okay? She got food stamps. Oh, that's 22 years ago. Well, damn near 22 years ago because I'm about to be 42. But, you know what I'm saying? That was 22 years ago. You guys live good. You guys live decent now, okay? You don't want for anything. I meet ends meet and I pay my bills. I'm not saying I got my kids Porsches and BMWs outside. I don't even drive a BMW. I drive a Chevy Malibu. But, okay... We have to stop using what our past was as our today excuse, especially if that shit was so long ago. If you keep harboring on that old negativity shit, it's going to continue to be negative shit. And you, unfortunately, honey, Kayla, I just was used to. If you did not watch my last week episode about my ex, who I, my sudden breakup... I was so happy all of this time, you know what I'm saying, until I started living with him and I started seeing him for who he really was. Had no money no more. Started using me. Dick was little and wouldn't stay up too, okay? He ate pussy, but he couldn't really eat it that great. You know, when you got to think of other niggas that you didn't have sex with or whatever or some kind of freaky fantasy in your head while the niggas eating your pussy, then you know that shit ain't good. But anyway... I started noticing different things and he just was petty and just using me and lies and lies upon lies I started noticing. So I was used to and you know what? It was for the same reasons because I wanted to be loved too. And who don't? It's a good feeling to be loved but sometimes we have to take time for ourselves and I for one thought I had enough time because it was like two and a half, three years. So it was three years. I for one had enough time of being alone but I guess it wasn't enough for me for me personally but when we go through all these bad relationships or just a couple or even one that's been been traumatic to us we have to take time out to heal and stop trying to jump on a bandwagon into the next relationship because you're not going to attract someone that's decent you're going to attract the last kind of guy that you just broke up with or maybe even worse or maybe just a tad bit not as bad but you're not going to attract anybody that's worthy of you because you're so wanting to be loved by the opposite sex. It's great to be loved by the opposite sex. However, it's really great to be on your own, in your own dwelling, living your single life and being free and learning who you are as a person. So now, Kayla, you have to refresh all of this shit that you've been through because you have been through so much and you're still... Worried about what the fuck he's doing and you're stalking him. He's not worried about you. 
He's not worried about Kayla. He's blocked you because he's used you up to his ability. He cannot think of any more fucking scam stories to tell you. And when he does, he's going to unblock you and he's going to come back at you. That's just what he did the last time. The loan shark. I would have let him get in his situation. Oh, you got a situation? Well, nigga, get in your situation. I really don't give a fuck. He's used you up and he's moved on to the next female. The reason why he's blocked you is so you don't write shit on his timeline exposing him. All those hearts that you see for the other ladies on social media that he's leaving all these Google eyes for, they look like shit. And ladies, when I tell you they look like trolls under the fucking bridge, these bitches is, okay, whatever. And like I said, he's not bad looking, but he's not what I would, I would date. But these are his next victims. So you think he's paying these bitches attention because he's attracted to them? No. He's probably done his research and he sees what the fuck these bitches got going on for themselves. Regardless of how fucking ugly they are, they got something going on or he's going to find out and he's going to get what he can get out of them. So of course he's blocked you from his social media because why would he want you to expose him and to expose his fucking plans of getting paper? The nigga probably don't have a job. That's why he's so into using women. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you were one of the victims, and you probably wasn't the first. But now it's time to get up, revise, and refresh yourself. Throw some pep in your step and some water on your face, girl, and relax and worry about you. Don't worry about no next nigga who don't give a fuck about you. He's a scumbag. A fucking scumbag. And I'm sorry to say it. You weren't stupid, but here's the thing. You were very fucking naive and you wanted to be loved. The first thing you can do, my dear, is love yourself. That's the first thing you can fucking do. And if you need a fucking friend to talk to, shit, send me your WhatsApp number and we can WhatsApp each other. But I'm not about to let you go and feel like you got to seek revenge on somebody who's really not worthy. He's not worth your time. Stop thinking about him because he's not thinking about you. Worry about yourself, Kayla, and get back to your health. And stop spending money on worthless niggas that ain't worth shit. He's a loser. An unfortunate loser. And I'm sorry that you had to go through this. But some of the best of us go through some shit in life. And it just be like so hurtful. And we can't believe that it's happened. And then we get back on our feet. And we get that pet back in our step. But we don't allow it to happen to us again. So stop worrying about him. And stop crying yourself to sleep. Because the more you think about him, you're going to allow him to feed off of you and take your energy. And when this motherfucker unblocks you again, if he does, he's only back around again for what he can get from you. What he can gain from you. He ain't nothing but a fucking opportunist in the making and in the waiting. Like a fucking sly ass fox just waiting for you around the corner ready to take every fucking thing you got and then talk shit about you. Was I like going back to my ex just now? Not my ex-husband, but my ex-boyfriend. Like, yeah, because he's a fucking dog and a sly, sneaky son of a bitch too. Real sneaky. And he'll use you up and he'll take whatever he can from you. And then when he don't want you no more or he's gotten caught, he call you all kind of names like ugly fat bitch. Because that's what I am. I'm an ugly fat bitch and et cetera, et cetera. Well, okay, I'll be all of that. But you don't have room to talk. I'm far from fat. And I'm far from fucking ugly. But nigga, what's your excuse? Because there's nothing you can do to that ugly ass face. And fat, that nigga was fat. Should I put his motherfucking mug shot up for everybody to see? I wouldn't want to go there. But listen, Kayla. Never worry about an opportunist because that's what he is. And unfortunately, you was used and you was taken for what you have. And now it's time to gain your spirit back. Stop worrying about how to prove him and how you want to make him see that he lost a good thing. Because your intentions and his intentions were totally different things. And he never wanted a relationship with you. He only wanted what he can get from you. And he's gotten that and now he's ghost. So unfortunately, ladies, this was the real talk and it was really, really long and real. But you know what? I did promise Tinky Man that we would go get some ice cream. So on that note, I will be ending this video now and I only was able to do two. But as you guys know, leave your comments below. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about my peaches, y'all. And I will be back next week with a brand new real talk video. And as always, stay diva and diva.